Is being labeled a loser really such a terrible thing? That's a question worth exploring. The ancient Stoic philosopher, Epictetus, had a unique perspective on what truly matters in life. In a world that often equates success with wealth and fame, Epictetus saw these pursuits as insignificant in comparison to deeper, more meaningful aspects of life. He observed that our relentless pursuit of external validation and achievements often prevents us from attaining something far more profound, a state of inner contentment, unaffected by the unpredictable twists and turns of external circumstances, including the opinions of others. It's a sad reality that many of us are willing to sacrifice our well-being for the sake of societal approval. Epictetus believed that true happiness and freedom come from letting go of what he referred to as lesser things. If that means society perceives us as losers, so be it. It's a price worth paying. This video does not advocate neglecting oneself or engaging in self-destructive behavior. Quite the opposite, it delves into Epictetus' philosophy, offering a different perspective on what truly matters in life. It explores the concept of being a loser and argues that being perceived as such doesn't have to be a negative thing. Now, what exactly is a loser? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, a loser is defined as follows, a person who is incompetent or unable to succeed. But here's the catch. Competence and success are highly subjective concepts. What one person sees as competence, another might view as incompetence, the same holds true for success. For some, successfully managing a small business, such as a hair salon, is a significant achievement. Meanwhile, others consider success as the exploration of other planets. Definitions of competence and success continually evolve with the changing times, societal norms, cultural influences, and religious beliefs. In essence, the concept of being a loser is fluid, ambiguous, and ultimately meaningless beyond the interpretations of others. In today's consumerist and capitalist societies, the concept of loserdom is closely tied to the relentless pursuit of external possessions, particularly money and fame. People often have a predefined image of what they believe will complete them, and this image can vary widely. For some, it's the classic scenario a well-paying job, an attractive partner, a couple of kids, and that iconic white picket fence. Others might envision success as having a massive following on social media and a vibrant social circle that serves as evidence of their desirability. And if you don't fit into this mold, well, society might label you as a loser. In essence, you're considered incompetent at attaining what's deemed desirable and therefore unable to succeed in life. It's a harsh reality. Being branded a loser is a twofold blow. It means not only falling short in the eyes of others, but also enduring ridicule because of it. But the question arises, how valuable are these things we're told we should desire? And how terrible is it to face ridicule for not having them? This is where Epictetus' wisdom becomes invaluable. What is it that we truly desire? What is it about material possessions, vast wealth, or Instagram fame that holds such allure. In simple terms, it's the promise of happiness that beckons us. We paint mental pictures of a world where throngs of people adore us, while we sip cocktails on a sun-kissed beach, basking in the comments and likes on our social media profiles. It seems like the epitome of joy. But the truth is, such a life may provide temporary bliss, but eventually, we adapt to it and revert to our baseline happiness now carrying a much heftier price tag. Epictetus had little regard for these external goods. He deemed them feeble, servile, and most crucially, beyond our control. When we chase wealth and fame, we're pursuing the fickle, the capricious, and the transient. We're chasing things that can be taken away from us in the blink of an eye. Furthermore, the pursuit of these external markers of success exacts a considerable toll something many are willing to pay, but at a great cost. As an example, Epictetus used the analogy of someone striving to win at the Olympic Games. Even today, such a pursuit, if successful, garners immense respect. However, it comes at a price, often involving immense dedication 
and personal sacrifice. Epictetus indeed emphasizes the importance of considering the sacrifices we make and whether they truly benefit us. He eloquently puts it, You must conform to rules, submit to a diet, refrain from dainties, exercise your body, whether you choose it or not, at a stated hour, in heat and cold. You must drink no cold water, nor sometimes even wine. In a word, you must give yourself up to your master, as to a physician. Then, in the combat, you may be thrown into a ditch, dislocate your arm, turn your ankle, swallow dust, be whipped, and after all, lose the victory. The question arises, is it worth it? Is it wise to endure such toil, as Marcus Aurelius aptly puts it, for mirror a clacking of tongues? particularly when we recognize that public praise can swiftly transform into public shame. Epictetus firmly asserts, these things are not consistent. He emphasizes that only those things within our control are worth pursuing. These are the inner qualities, contentment, joy, right action, tranquility, and the power of restraint. The rest, the external markers of success, are overrated and should take a back seat. Epictetus consistently draws a distinction between the true nature of things and the way we perceive them in our minds. For instance, he reminds us that there's a difference between how we view our loved ones and their intrinsic nature. While we may see our spouse and children as unique and exceptional, they are, in reality, just human beings like any others. It's our judgments and perceptions that make them special to us, not their inherent qualities. This logic can be applied to everything external. What makes the object of our desire so appealing? Is it the object itself, or is it the way we perceive it? Often, we find ourselves like a flock of sheep, wanting something simply because everyone else does. Conversely, we don't want to be perceived as losers because no one desires that label. Now, desiring what others desire isn't inherently wrong. In many cases, Following the majority can lead to better health and well-being. However, it takes wisdom and common sense to discern when it's best not to pursue what the masses seek. Epictetus prioritized a state of happiness and freedom above all else, asserting that we should be willing to abandon anything that obstructs it. If that means being perceived as losers in the eyes of others, so be it. But here's the question we should ponder. What's so bad about being a loser? Is it genuinely an unfortunate fate, or do we view it as unfortunate because of societal judgments? Imagine a scenario where you have enough to fulfill your basic needs, but you lack substantial achievements in other areas of life. In our scenario, we find ourselves without vibrant social circles, partners, social media followers, or impressive jobs. Consequently, we're often labeled as losers, a judgment that stings because it strikes at our egos the stories we tell ourselves about who we are. But are we genuinely less simply because we lack certain external circumstances? Is someone who is rich and famous inherently better than someone who is poor and unknown? According to Epictetus' logic, such reasoning is utterly nonsensical. He astutely points out, these reasonings are unconnected. I am richer than you, therefore I am better. I am more eloquent than you, therefore I am better. The connection is rather this. I am richer than you, therefore my property is greater than yours. I am more eloquent than you, therefore my style is better than yours. But you, after all, are neither property nor style. Our external circumstances say very little about our inner well-being, which is what truly matters from a stoic perspective. Yet, we often place excessive importance on these external markers of success to the extent that we're willing to sacrifice our happiness and freedom in a relentless pursuit of being seen as adequate and avoiding the label of less in the eyes of society. So, once again, being labeled a loser isn't inherently negative. It's the meaning we attach to it that shapes our perception. If we see things like public praise, reputation, and others' opinions for what they truly are, opinions that are fickle, unreliable, often devoid of value, rooted in delusion and false appearances, and entirely beyond our control. We may find it easier to cultivate indifference towards them. In this light, 
Being a loser doesn't hold the power to hinder our ability to attain happiness and freedom. It's the relentless pursuit of avoiding it that does. As Epictetus aptly advises, let death and exile, and all other things which appear terrible, be daily before your eyes, but death chiefly, and you will never entertain any abject thought, nor too eagerly covet anything. Regardless of the path we choose, there will always be a price to pay. The crucial question is, what price are we willing to pay? Epictetus makes a clear distinction between these two options as he stated, be either a philosopher or one of the vulgar. Opting for the vulgar path, the choice most people make, comes at a cost to our inner well-being. We pay the price to obtain what's conventionally considered desirable, like wealth and praise. In doing so, we often exchange our freedom, health, and inner peace to engage in the rat race and keep up with societal expectations. Being a philosopher, on the other hand, means we pay the price of likely not having, or at least not actively pursuing, what the vulgar desire. It often translates into living a simple, unassuming life, devoid of external extravagance, something many would deem the archetype of a loser. However, according to Epictetus, a genuine philosopher always prioritizes inner peace and happiness above all else, even above work, money, and physical comfort. As he aptly puts it, if you want to improve, reject such reasonings as these. If I neglect my affairs, I'll have no income. If I don't correct my servant, he will be bad. For it is better to die with hunger, exempt from grief and fear, than to live in affluence with perturbation. And it is better your servant should be bad than you unhappy. While this may sound extreme, Epictetus remains consistent in his prioritization of what he deems truly valuable. To become unconquerable by external circumstances, we must be willing to relinquish everything. Any attachment to external possessions, no matter how insignificant, exerts control over our mental state. Embarking on this challenging path, rife with obstacles, minimal external rewards, and potential loss and resistance, is a true test of our commitment to inner peace and freedom. As Epictetus wisely remarks, you'll have to forego your ease, work hard, leave people behind, be despised by menials, be laughed at, and get crumbs at best when it comes to recognition and position in all affairs. So if you find yourself labeled a loser in the eyes of others, if you're laughed at or even despised, it may initially appear as a bleak and pitiful position. The reputation of being a loser often carries negative connotations, but let's consider the flip side. It comes with its own unique advantages. Namely, it frees us from conforming to other people's rules and preserves the energy that we might have otherwise squandered on what Epictetus referred to as lesser things, simply to gain the approval of others. In essence, being a loser can offer the benefit of not paying the price for trying so hard not to be one. Paradoxically, this could make a loser a winner in the Stoic sense. Drawing inspiration from Epictetus' teachings, it's essential to possess the wisdom to discern what truly benefits us and the strength to consistently prioritize it. Disregarding the allure of external rewards like praise, wealth, power, and social status. As he wisely stated, don't wish to be a general or a senator or a consul, but to be free. And the only way to this is a contempt of things not in our own control. Thank you for joining me on this philosophical journey. Remember, true success, as Epictetus teaches us, lies not in the external labels and accolades, but in the inner peace, freedom, and tranquility that come from mastering ourselves and our responses to the world around us.